All right, good morning. Uh, I heard on uh, Farscape, uh, the show, uh, that the grace of age is we learn to accept. <sighs> it's like, oh, come on, I feel like I'm getting the age part. But the acceptance part is, is so challenging sometimes, isn't it? You know, so here's what I come to on this, is that people are who they are, right? I mean, that's just what's so. People are who they are. Things are what they are. Life is what it is. Now, maybe, maybe it is high spiritual practice, you know, to accept all things exactly as they are. That's a line from A Course in Miracles. I will accept all things exactly as they are. But we also want to balance that, I think, with being in the world and using the power that God has given each of us to grow and evolve and heal and expand our life in, in greater ways. So for me, when I think of acceptance, it's, this is not resignation, and I hope you don't hear resignation. Resignation feels like giving up, quitting, throwing in the towel, that kind of thing. Acceptance feels more to me like allowing with an active willingness for the best within someone to come forward or the best possible outcome, outcome in a situation to come forward. Um, it's like acknowledging, okay, this is just what's so right now. You know, in my imagination, I have a conversation with Jesus and I ask him what technique he uses to stay on top of things, to stay loving with all people, even the difficult ones, you know who I mean. And what he says to me in this little exercise they do is he says, I have no methods. All I do is accept people as they are and love them. And it's like, oh, come on. Don't you have a technique? I'd really rather have a technique. <laughs> that is just so hard to accept people as they are and just love them. And so, you know, what a task, you know, to look at people, to recognize them and accept them as they are without wanting them to change. So I will tell you, um, some years back, my sister was married to a guy and, um, and, you know, it was one of those people come into our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. He was there for a reason and then not. And so, uh, uh, but he and I always got along really, really well. And as it turned out, they split up and he and I probably did not see each other for more than a decade. And then there was a family wedding and, and he showed up at the wedding. And at some point we were visiting and, and he said to me, he said, you know the worst part about the divorce? And I said, no, what? And he said, I felt like I lost you as a friend in that process. And I said, wow, I, I had no idea you felt that way. And he said to me, and, and this was so interesting to me, he said, I always felt accepted for who I was around you. And, and that, really, that really touched me very, very deep. I said, wow, I, because I think I, I think I was fairly successful at not judging the guy. It was just like, okay, he wasn't a bad guy. They just were not a good match. You know, sometimes you're with somebody and they're a good match. And then at some point, you become not a good match. And that's all it was. They came together. They did what they had to do together as a couple. Then they were not a good match. But it didn't mean that I didn't like him or care about him as a person. And yes, he was quirky like all of us are quirky. I haven't met anyone who isn't. In fact, I'm sure I outquirk him on the quirk scale, you know? So, um, but what a task to look at people and recognize them and accept them as they are without wanting them to change. You know, I wonder, you know, how can we possibly do such a thing when people need so much help? <laughs> when they need so much improvement, right? Uh, do you have anybody that's hard to accept? You know who I'm talking about. So the first thing I have to say that is important to remember is God was very patient with each of us. And so therefore, it is our job to be patient with other people. Everybody's unfolding according to their own soul's map. And so the other thing is that people being who they are give us the practice, the opportunity to grow. It's no coincidence that these people are in our life and that it's ours to love and accept them. I sincerely believe that every human being wants to feel a sense of being lovable without having to qualify for some particular acceptance. You know, it would serve us, I think, in the world to behave as the divine children of God that we say we are. And this means being forgiving and compassionate. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Abraham Lincoln. And I believe he practiced acceptance quite well. And so during the Civil War, there was an aide who approached uh, Lincoln and said, um, you've got an enemy. And somehow, 
you've got to get rid of him, slay him. To which Lincoln responded, if I turn my enemy into a friend, have I not slain my enemy? And I thought, wow, what a, what a, great, what a great notion. In science of mind, I think we would say, I will give this acceptance, and if I really accept, it will no longer have any power over me. So also, on the other team during the Civil War, Jefferson Davis, who was the president of the Confederacy, asked, uh, a reverend, uh, asked about uh, General Robert E. Lee's impression of a certain officer. And General Lee responded, uh, I command and hold him in high regard. Uh, to which Jefferson Davis said, you can't be serious. Why, you know, this man habitually speaks unkind things about you. And patiently he replied, he says, well, I understood the president to ask my opinion of the officer and not the man's opinion of me. <laughs> so two men in different, uh, uh, in, in, in different situations determined to accept other people without actually being accepted themselves, you know? So this comes back to that idea that we talk about so often is that what other people do is their karma and how we respond is creating ours. So we have to seek the good in others. I mean, that's part of what we teach. And this is not about being like a do-gooder kind of thing. It's, it's a smart uh, practice. It's efficient. It's proactive. And it's completely spiritually based, seeing the God, the good, in other people. It, you know, it actually makes our life easier. You say, well, why is that? How could that be? You know, well, what you look for, you will find. We all understand that principle. What you look for, you will find. So if you look for the good, if you look for the love, if you look for the kindness in other people, you will see it. But if by the same token, you look for all the ways that you are separate from other people, why people are you know, not this or not that, you will find that as well. So look for it, and people will begin to show it to you. It's almost like you're saying silently, I know the good is in there. I know the love is in there. You know, I know the God, the Spirit, the Christ is in there. You know, when you appreciate their worth, uh, others find it easy to be their best, right? When, when people are appreciated for and accepted for who they are. You know, it's like you, you hold open the context for people to step up into their best, right? So when you accept others, others they don't fear rejection. I think they show their strengths instead of concealing their weaknesses. You know, they act confident instead of afraid. Now, other people want someone to notice they are good and valuable. And I think this is what happens with my, in the, my relationship with my, my former brother-in-law and I. That, you know, they want to belong, and they want to be thought of as special. And they need someone to believe in them. Now, I don't think there's anybody here who hasn't felt that we wanted someone to believe in us. So looking for the good is that belief. We want to look for the good in other people, especially when they have been troublesome or they're on what I'll call probation in your mind. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to see how this goes with them, you know, and I might shut the door on them or we'll see if I let them walk through again. See, you know, they, uh, they believe that they're separate from God, you know. They believe that they're separate from you. Mm -hmm. So don't ignore when somebody has their di a difficulty or a problem, but continue to encourage the good. I know you'll get through this. I believe in you. I know you can do it. You know, I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers. Anyone who doubts can, you know, you can find, fail you can find failings easily, right? That doesn't take a particular talent. But finding the good, I think, takes faith. Finding the good takes a level of belief. You know, faith that it's there. Belief that you will find it. You know, so the search for the good, I think, is, is its own reward. You know, looking for it in others, what happens is we so often discover it within ourselves. And, and that's more reason to believe in yourself. Um, so now bear with me. I'm going to tell a baseball story. Okay, so this is a sport, I know. And, and this will be shocking to people who know me. But, uh, and so I, I talk about baseball because it's really the only sport I understand. Uh, so uh, the year was 1947, and Jackie Robinson became the first African-American ball player to play in the major leagues. This was huge. And the Brooklyn Dodgers were the team. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the owner uh, of the team told Robinson, it's going to be tough. You know, you're going to take abuse. You're going to be ridiculed. 
you will take more verbal punishment than you've ever thought possible. He said, but I'm willing to back you all the way if you have determination to make it work. And so Robinson experienced that prediction. He was verbally and physically abused by players who intentionally ran over him. Uh, the crowd yelled racial slurs and digging comments. Opponents ridiculed Robinson as well as the Dodger team. And around mid-season, Robinson was having a particularly bad day. He fumbled the ball. He overthrew. Uh, he was a disaster at bat. And, and the crowd booed him constantly. Then something really, really incredible happened, though. Uh, in front of the crowd, uh, Pee Wee Reese walked over from his shortstop position. Leave it to the shortstops, right? Uh, and he put his arm around Jackie Robinson and indicated his acceptance of, a major, of the major league's first African-American baseball player. And Robinson later reflected on this and said, that gesture saved my career. That was the gesture that absolutely saved my career. Pee Wee made me feel as if I belonged. And the impact, you know, that we have on other people through our own acceptance of them is extraordinary, and we have no idea what the repercussions of that will be down the road. So my thought is, why don't we just let other people be free, free to accept you or not? You know, statistically, you've heard me say this, 50% of the people don't even like you without even knowing you. You know, they don't. They just don't like you, right? Now, this is bad news for the people pleasers out there. It really is. Because I know, I'm, one, I'm like, but I'm sure you'd like me if you got to know me, really. If we spent some time together, I think you'd really, really like me. I'm a pretty nice guy, you know? No, you know, they, why don't they like you? Because you look like their ex or their third grade teacher or the guy down the street who stole their bicycle when they were nine or whatever. But, you know, so there, part of that's not in your control. I know that idea f um, fills our heart with sort of the agony of anticipated rejection. Oh my God, 50% of the people are not going to like me. Yet consider only people who are free not to love you can love you completely, right? In that freedom to not love you, people can show up and love you. Because love can only be given freely. You know, the slightest obligation, I think, dulls the person. You know, accept that person may Accept that that person may accept your ideas, they may accept your thinking, they may accept your point of view, or not. You know, people who are your strongest allies support you because they believe in you, not because they fear you, right? People are loyal to the person who allows them to be free, who respects their independence. You know, trying to control others, I will not ask for a show of hands. Uh, but you'll notice that when we try to control other people, they resist it. It also wastes your energy, your resources. It's like trying to contain the wind, right? Uh, also, in trying to control others, I think we lose our own freedom is what happens. You know, I'm so busy trying to hover over you and control. Then, then where does, where does, what happens to me? I think we have, we have difficulty with acceptance because we want the world to be fair, right? We? we want it to be fair out there. We want to depend on something concrete. We want guarantees. But you know, fair is a value judgment. Right? And so that means that what's fair is subjective. What's fair to us today could be different tomorrow. Or what's fair to us right now, 10 minutes from now, could look completely different than that. All right? So the Bible teaches us to judge not by appearance, but to judge righteous judgment. So here's another area for acceptance. This can lead us to be more loving and, and more caring. You know, the tip of the iceberg could be deceiving. You know, the universe is not under pressure, neither are you or I. L life is law operating through love. We teach that in the science of mind. Life is law operating through love. And so furthermore, things take the time they take. You know, baby chicks come out of eggs. But you can't rush that process, right? Uh, flowers take the time they take to bloom. Uh, you don't have to do anything until you're ready. Really, you don't. You know, sp spirit, spirit does not yell or rush. It doesn't push or coerce. It's that still, small voice. It's a quiet, inner knowing. And so the steadfastness of faith 
I think, results from practice. The fact that we are willing to meditate or pray or study sacred books. I like to think of it as I do my part, and as for the rest, all is well and God's in charge. But I have to be certain that I do my part. Regardless, I have to do my part. If I feel sick, if I'm tired, if I'm hungry, it doesn't matter. I have to do my part. And then the universe will rush in and do the universe's part. So what do we depend on? God, I hope. You know, what's, what's more concrete? What's more real than God? You know, what greater guarantee than the spiritual laws and promises of, of, of God? So, um, so one um, holiday season, a well-to-do family was leaving for a party at, at the country club. Yeah. And the phone rings, and... Hello, Mom. I'm back in the States with an early release from my Army duties in Vietnam. Wonderful, son. When will you be home? He says, that depends. I'd like to bring home a buddy with me. Sure, bring him home for a few days. That would be great. Well, Mom, there's something you need to know about my buddy. He says, both of his legs have been amputated, and one arm is missing, and his face is disfigured, and he's lost an eye and an ear. He's not much to look at but he needs a home really bad. A home? Well, why don't you bring him home for a few days? You don't understand, Mom. I want to bring him home to live. And there's a pause, and the mother says, well, I think that's asking a lot, son. But you get home soon so we can spend the holidays together. And as for your friend, I'm sorry about his condition, but, you know, uh, what would our friends at the country club say? I mean, how could I explain that to people at the club? And it would just be too much for your father, you know? And so the phone suddenly went dead. So late that night, the couple returns from their party at the country club. And there is a call from the police department in this small California town. And the mother called and spoke to the chief. And he said that they found a man with uh, both legs and one arm missing. And his face was badly mangled. And he was missing an eye and an ear. He had shot himself that evening. And his identification revealed that he was their son. Not a happy ending. But see, this idea about unconditional acceptance is a reality many people have difficulty comprehending. How about us? I wonder, would we have received the man with open arms? You know, like the father in the story of the prodigal son. I know everybody knows that story. The father's attitude in that story is, I love and accept you unconditionally. He loves the stay-at-home son. He loves the son who goes off and squanders his inheritance. Mother Teresa said, I serve Jesus in all of his distressing disguises. Now, we all understand there are a lot of distressing disguises out there. Mm -hmm. So here's a clue. Accept yourself. That's where we start. When you don't accept yourself, you become oversensitive to rejection. I say this from experience. You know, when you don't accept yourself, you lose faith every time an old weakness shows up. When you don't, you waste time looking for something outside of you to make you complete. When you don't, you try to beat others rather than seeking to be your own best. Acceptance is not a hopeless position. I think it's the only position from which you can grow. If you accept all of your life, you know, none of it, none of it will have been wasted. So in classes often we do this practice that we call the love prayer. And it's very, very simple. And you don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to tell anybody you're doing it. But on the in-breath, you just silently say, I accept you. And you think of someone. So do this with me now. Think of someone. It could be someone in your family. It could be someone you work with, a neighbor. It could be someone on the news. It doesn't matter. Just think of someone. And as you breathe in, silently say to yourself, I accept you. And on the out breath, silently say, I bless you. Keep thinking of them. I accept you. Keep thinking of them. I bless you. I accept you on the in breath. I bless you on the out-breath. Um, it seems to me that when we don't accept ourselves, 
there's a level where we actually dread what each day will bring because we don't know what it's going to reveal about us. You know? Um, accepting yourself, I think, is everything because it opens the door to being able to accept other people in the world. Again, don't hear resignation when I say acceptance, right? If you accept yourself, you can accept the world. God loves you, and I promise you I do too. Let's pray. Thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just realize that here we are in the presence of God, that God's spirit surrounds us, it fills us. That very presence of God, the living spirit, is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us. And so in this awareness, we join in consciousness this morning, not only knowing that God is here and that we are one with God, but also that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so I speak the word for us today that where we've had difficulty in acceptance, whether it's about ourself or someone in our life or some situation in the world, we join together in consciousness and silently, I accept you, I bless you. I accept you, I bless you. Acceptance is not giving in, it's not resignation, it's not condoning bad behavior. It's recognizing and calling forth the greater good, that divine potential that's in people while we allow them to be exactly where they are. That in that freedom, that's where people grow and heal and maybe even change. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear, and we wrap our spiritual arms around them. We remember that God within them is fulfilling every need, is healing every hurt, is balancing every account. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world, so all those situations that are pulling at our attention this week, we say God is present right there as healing, as peace, as all needs met, as perfect outcome. We bless our church and we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together, that there is healing, there's raising up for all of us. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is so, that this is the truth right now. And so it is, and so I let it be. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.